Question 4 says a wheel is rotating freely with an angular speed omega on a shaft. The moment of inertia of the wheel is I and the moment of inertia of the shaft is negligible. Another wheel of moment of inertia 3 I initially at rest is suddenly coupled to the same shaft. The resulting fractional loss in the kinetic energy of the system is and the four options are given. Clearly the question is from the topic rotation. The concepts involved are about conservation of angular momentum and of course the rotational kinetic energy of a rigid body which is rotating about a fixed axis. So, if we look at the expression for kinetic energy initially that kinetic energy is half i omega square let us call it k i. So, we have k i as half i omega square right. Now, when it is coupled with the other object whose moment of inertia is 3 i, let us apply conservation of angular momentum to find the new angular speed. So, the initial angular momentum was i into omega and after the wheel of moment of inertia 3 i is coupled, the total moment of inertia becomes 4 i and let us say that the final angular speed is omega dash. So, that means i omega is equal to 4 i into omega dash. This is giving us the value of the final angular speed omega dash and that is equal to omega divided by 4. So, let us put it here. So, we have omega dash as omega divided by 4. What is the final rotational kinetic energy? The final rotational kinetic energy is 1 by 2 into 4 i into omega dash square. And if we perform the calculations, the final kinetic energy is coming out as no final kinetic energy k f, we find it is coming out as k i divided by 4. So, what is the fractional loss in the kinetic energy? Well, the loss itself will be 3 k i by 4 and that divided by k i is 3 by 4. Clearly, the fractional loss in the kinetic energy is 3 by 4 and that means among the options, option 4 is the correct one. Let us now go to question number 5. Question 5 says activities of 3 radioactive substances A, B and C are represented by the curves A, B and C in the figure. We have these you know curves between L and R and time in years. Then their half lives T half of A is to T half of B is to T half of C are in the ratio and the four options are given. Clearly the question is from the topic uh, nucleus and it is about uh, the radioactive decay and uh, the expression for the activity is given as R is equal to R naught into e to the power minus lambda t where lambda is the decay constant is it not. And if we take log on both sides we in fact get the equation of the straight lines that have been provided. So, if I take log on both sides we get ln r is equal to ln r naught minus lambda into t and that means the slope of these respective curves is in fact equal to minus lambda. So, we have the values of lambda a, lambda b and lambda c. For example, the value of lambda a if we see here is equal to the negative of the slope of the curve for a and that is equal to 0 0.6. Okay. So, this is coming out as 0 0.6, the unit here would be you know per year and uh, similarly for lambda b we have lambda b is equal to you know 6 by 5 that means 1.2 and finally, the value of lambda c is coming out as 2 by 5 or 0 0.4 units. Okay. So, lambda c is coming at 2 by 5 or 0 0.4. So, we have all the lambdas and the half life is ln 2 divided by lambda we know that. 
So, with that we can easily find the ratios between the half lives of A, B and C and that in fact is coming out as 2 is to 1 is to 3. I hope the solution is absolutely clear. Let us slide it back and let us now go to question number 6. Question 6 says a helicopter rises from rest on the ground vertically upwards with a constant acceleration g. A food packet is dropped from the helicopter when it is at a height h. The time taken by the packet to reach the ground is close to g is the acceleration due to gravity. The question is about motion in a straight line and that too with uniform acceleration. Well, the acceleration is changing at an instant because initially acceleration is in the vertical upward direction with magnitude g and once it is dropped from the helicopter the acceleration is g but in the vertically downward direction. So, we have to find the time after the packet is dropped how much time it takes to hit the ground. Okay. So, let us look at the solution. See if it has started from ground and uh, it has gone to height h, the helicopter has gone to height h. So, let us say it has come up to this height, this is h and at this moment the velocity of the helicopter would be root 2 g h in the upward direction because the acceleration is in the upward direction. And when the food packet is dropped from the helicopter, its initial velocity will be same as the velocity of the helicopter at that moment. So, that means, if I call this velocity the initial velocity of the food packet after being dropped, if we call it as v naught, then value of v naught is root 2 g h and the direction is upward. So, initially it will go up and then finally, it will come to stop and come back and hit the ground. So, from this point on, it is a uniformly accelerated motion, but the acceleration is g in the vertically downward direction. If we call the upward as the positive direction, then the displacement is minus h, is it not when it hits the ground? So, the equation becomes minus h, the displacement is equal to initial velocity that is v naught. So, we have it as you know root 2 g h into t. We are using the equation s is equal to u t plus half a t square, s is minus h, u is root 2 g h and of course, time and then the other term is minus half g t square. So, minus half g t square. So, we have a quadratic equation, we need to solve this quadratic equation, easily solve it and once we solve it, we find that the value of t, the time it will take you know to go up and come back and hit the ground is coming out as 3.4 root h by g and that means, for this particular question option 1 is the correct option and let us slide it back. Let us now go to question number 7.